Hi, I'm John Cox, and I work with Lisa Cohen, and together we make the Story Ladies Magic Book. That's a show where we read books by new authors. We do a few other things in the show, too. There's some animation and stuff that's great. But the main focus is books by authors just like you. And uh, we've been asked to make a short presentation to show you some of the techniques we've come up with to quickly and efficiently, with a minimum crew, that's usually just either the two of us or just her, make a great video. You're going to be making a video for the Orange County Children's Book Festival that connects you with your readers. Most of you will want to shoot from someplace really convenient like at your living room, which is exactly what the story lady does when she does her live show. Now here she is telling her story, showing us the book, but how do we get to this point? There are three components to making a video like this. Number one is the setup, setting up the lights and the tripod and everything. Part two is the presentation. Lisa will be showing you how that works. And then the third component is delivery. Uh, very important to deliver the final product. Now let's take a look. Here's where the story lady likes to do her show from. This is actually her dining room. And as you can see, it's a really nice dining room. And it has a great background. So the first thing is to clear out the table and the chairs. And she, uh, she works with puppets, so she's using a table to put her stuff on. And it's not a bad idea. You're probably not going to need that. But you can see that this gives a really nice ambiance around her. Okay, she's going to have music underneath the story as she tells it. So she's got a player hooked up to a laptop with the song queued up. Now it's time for the lights. She puts up the lights. There's one light right in front of her and then one light on the background. We always use clamp-on work lights. Uh, they're inexpensive and efficient. They'll go on anything. And remember, use daylight temperature bulbs. The box will say daylight right on it. And you can see that everything's lit nice. She's going to put up a tripod. This is really important because this is where your phone goes when it's recording you. And you notice she has the phone facing her like she's doing a selfie so she can kind of keep track of where she is in the frame. And there's the whole thing with her book. A nice tight shot there and everything's lit and the background looks good. Really important to pay attention to the background. So what happens when we just put one light on? This is just one light on her face. You can see she looks kind of washy. This is just a light on the background. See it's just enough to make some highlights and some shadows. Now let's put the front and the back together and look how bright everything is. It's bright and fun and you can read the book. There's no reflection on the book. If it reflects, just tilt it down a little until it's not. You can see it in the phone. And now we're gonna have Lisa tell us how she presents the story. Hello everyone, my name is Lisa Cohen. I'm also known as the Story Lady and I am here to help all of you wonderful authors and illustrators with your online presentation of reading your own books. And I'm so excited to share with you today, Gary Grasshopper Battles a Bully. This is actually a book that we got at one of our many wonderful times at the Orange County Children's Book Festival. So we're going to go ahead and get started right now on reading the story. The first thing that you want to do is that this is supposed to be a personal experience. We want the online audience to feel that you're right there with them, reaching through the camera and sharing this very special book with them. So make sure that when you look into your recording device that you're looking into the camera lens as if you're actually talking to a child or whoever's listening. So let's go ahead and get started, shall we? Gary the grasshopper anxiously looked out the window watching for the mail to be delivered. As soon as he saw the mailman, he hopped as fast as he could to the mailbox. He was hoping that there was going to be a letter from his best friend, Freddy the Firefly. Well, you see, 
sometimes I wait for a letter to come to and I get very excited. Has that ever happened to you? Have you ever waited for something that you were really excited about? Let's see what happens to Gary the Grasshopper, shall we? Well, Gary planned to visit Freddie during spring break and Freddie was going to send directions to his house. That's what he was excited about, the directions to his house. And the letter came. And then Gary happily hopped back to the house. He ripped open the envelope and he started to read. Oh. His smile quickly changed to a frown as Freddie had written that he was having some problems in school and that maybe Gary should wait until summer to come for his visit. Look, see, can you see Gary? He doesn't look very happy, does he? That was not what he was expecting. Something didn't seem right about Freddie's letter, so Gary decided to go and visit him anyway. He was sure that his friend really needed him right now. Gary met his friends, Inchy the Inchworm, Buster the Beetle, and Tommy the Termite at the park. He read Freddie's letter to them and they all agreed that Gary should go visit him. And they wanted to come too. Spring break was only a week away, so the four friends sat at the park and they made plans for their trip. So I just wanted to go ahead and talk to you a little bit about some of the techniques that I was using in that storytelling. You might notice that I was varying the pitch of my voice and I was varying sometimes the tempo or the rhythm of my voice. And that's not a technical thing where I think I'm going to go fast or slow. It's more of like I'm pretending the story as an actor. I'm living the story as I tell it. So it's basically, you know, kind of finding your own inner child and experiencing the story as you are reading it with the children. So. For example, just to give you a technical thing, so Gary Happy hopped back to the house, he ripped open the envelope and he started reading. His smile quickly turned into a frown. So that little thing that I used right there, that's for an actor that's called a beat. So I, I'm building up, I'm building up, I'm building that energy and then, oh no, something happened. And that is one of the things that's going to engage children and your online viewer is that variation and that discovery, that moment where you yourself are discovering that something is different. And you can use your voice, your eyes, and your own imagination to make that come to life for your online viewer. I hope this was helpful for all of you, learning a little bit about storytelling. And I want to thank the wonderful author, Connie Amaral, for this really cute book, Gary Grasshopper Battles a Bully. Uh, we showed you setting up the tripod and the phone, but let's get a closer look at that because that's the key to this. You put your phone into the tripod with the screen facing you like you're going to do a selfie. That way you can see what you're doing. Now we push that little button at the bottom to get to all the icons, and we're gonna look for the YouTube icon. And we just keep scrolling down there. It's usually at the end. It's red. There it is, YouTube. And click that. Okay, and YouTube comes up. And now you're gonna wanna make sure that you're in the, your account. I use a bunch of accounts. Um, this one's going to be Story Lady's Magic Book, so I make sure to click that. Okay, now, you see up at the top there, there's our icon for our picture, magnifying glass, and then that little picture of a camera. Click on the little picture of a camera. It'll ask you to allow access to all the stuff in your phone. Always hit allow. I know it sounds really alarming, deny and allow, but it's easy stuff. It's just turning on your phone. Now, we can either do a live video straight to YouTube or we can record into the phone. And then that'll directly upload to YouTube. I say record. If anything goes wrong, you can do it twice. And there's some stuff we've already done down there. So let's hit record. Sometimes you gotta kinda press it. 
Okay, now, it's facing the wrong way, so that little camera with the two arrows at the bottom, that turns around to the, the selfie part of the camera. You can see me now, it's, it's facing towards me. And, uh, oh, that little light up on top there is pretty neat. I got that off Amazon. Okay, now, we hit the record button. It's that button on the left there. And you can see your recording because at the top, there's that red dot, and it's counting off the seconds and minutes. Now you're going. You can see why you want to have everything all ready to go when you start recording. And then when we hit stop, hit that red square again and it stops. Now, see that check mark there? Click the check mark. That means you're going to keep it. Not the X. You'll have to do it all over again. That can be crazy. We could add details here, like a title and stuff. But that's a little cumbersome on the phone. So we're just going to go ahead and hit upload. And give it a minute. It's going to upload to YouTube right now. Um, you don't want to shut off your phone or do anything. Just let it do its thing until it's ready. It should only take a few minutes. I should say here that it's probably a good idea to make sure your phone is fully charged when you start doing this. If you have like 10% battery, it's going to be a difficult day for you because you've got to stop and recharge. But, oh, and it'll fail at the worst possible moment. This is almost done. See, it's showing you 95% process. It has to upload and then it has to process. And there it is, ready to go. Now, we're going to shut off the phone. It's on our YouTube site. So we're going to go to the desktop computer and we're going to go down to YouTube Studio. See, we're on our YouTube site. And then we're going to go down on the left side to Videos. And that'll show us all the videos we've got. And our new one will be up at the top. There it is. Click on that little pencil right next to the picture. That lets you edit. And we're going to edit the title and uh, give it a correct title here by highlighting and back to just like you always do. Okay, make sure it's got your name. Then the name of your book. And now I'm putting uh, OC Children's Book Festival after that. This is going to the festival. They'll know who they are already. This is more for you so you know what you did with this video. And there you are. Yeah, I get letters mixed up too. It's a dyslexic thing. Most creative people have that. It's part of the game. Okay, then go down a little. See on the right, it says Visibility Public. Change that to Unlisted. This is a great thing. You should always do this with your videos that aren't going to go directly out. Like if you want an agent or somebody to see your video or a friend, Unlisted is perfect. You can't lose the video, and only the person you give the address to can see it. Now, it's either made for kids or not made for kids. I'm saying this one is. Doesn't matter because it's unlisted. Then you hit save. Always be sure to hit save. And there it is. And there's the address. See to the right of that blue address, there's those two little rectangles. That'll copy it into your uh, browser. But we're going to have a look at this, and you should always do this. Once you've finished with the whole thing, take a look at it to make sure it's right. See if there's any problems. Once you like it, I love this. This is my short video here. It's 10 seconds. Go ahead and go to share. And see right in the middle there is the address of the video. Go to the right and go to copy. And you're going to copy that. And then you're going to start an email to the book festival, but you're going to paste that into the body of the email and send that to them. And there you have it. And there it is. That's all there is to it. It's a lot easier than it looks. And uh, once it's done, you'll always have it. 
your setup, your presentation, and then your delivery. And uh, you could make these more sophisticated if you want. You could photograph pages from your book and then cut them into the video using a video editor. Uh, but that's a little more skill intensive and takes a little longer. Uh, music is always great uh, underneath while you're telling your story. Uh, there's little things you can do, but this gets you going and will serve the purpose to present your video at the uh, OC Children's Book Festival. And uh, we hope we've been helpful to you. I'm John Cox. Uh, Lisa Cohen is the story lady. And we'll be seeing you at the festival. Thanks, everyone. For step-by-step -step instructions from this video, please visit our website at kidsbookfestival.com.